You're listening to DP818 Power Radio Network, where we keep you locked to the power. Well, good evening, good afternoon, good night, good morning, wherever you are in the world. This is Jasmine Farnham and Nicole Porter, and we're coming to you via this pre-recorded podcast, I Am Power. Um. Nicole, thanks for joining me again tonight, and, you know, we're coming back to talk to you guys a bit more about this theme, Get Out of Debt. One, particularly because it is such a prevalent uh, problem in the United States where the deficit, even the country, you know, is trillions of dollars in debt. It seems to be a trending thing to do is to carry debt. And I, you know, mentioned in the last uh, broadcast or podcast that we did about a week ago that that just didn't sit well with me. I, I, I'm going to share a bit of my testimony uh, with you guys, um, and I posted this on Facebook, so some of you who are actually, um, you know, in my network on Facebook or friends with me on Facebook or friends with other people who have shared the post, I posted that I'm a loser. But as long as I feel, as long as I don't quit, I'm I'm not losing anything. So the post reads like, I'm a loser, but I'm not a quitter. And I'm getting a lot of response because people are taking that in, in a negative light. And what I really mean is to lose things or to put things at a loss wherein I'm not holding on to it anymore. I, I feel free. Um, yeah, you go through some things in life. You can lose a job. You can lose your car. You can lose your home. You can lose your family. You can lose friends. But you can never lose yourself. You can never lose you, the knowledge you have, the power you have, the sense of you. So that's what that's what that post is really a reflection uh, my morning meditation just really led to some revelation where you're just holding on to stuff um, and it's stressing you out. For example, um, I recently experienced being late with my car note. So the later you are, the more chance it is that they're going to come and take your car. And, of course, it panicked me because I need my car. I needed to get around. I need to travel. I need, I need it. But I thought about what's the worst thing that could possibly happen if they did take the car back, you know, I'm working on getting my credit straight. I'm working on getting some things together for for me. And if that were to happen, of course it would be a blow, it would be a loss, but I could let it go because I know at some point in time there's help uh, with the financial educational services, which we're going to be sharing more with you tonight about. There's a way that I can Actually, it had that happen, um, and Nicole will be able to explain you more about, you know, getting repos uh, off your credit. So if that were to have happened, I feel as though, okay, I could recover from that. But if I allowed that to depress me and to put me down and then I couldn't function and I couldn't figure things out, well, there's public transportation here, not that great, but, you know, I would be able to survive, and then I wouldn't be so distracted. So that's what I mean. Sometimes we hold on to things that we that are out of our control because we just don't want to be considered, quote, unquote, a loser. But I want to encourage people who are struggling with financing. Maybe, you know, you're going to face a foreclosure or an eviction or your credit is so bad you can't get a job because now people check your credit for jobs. I want to encourage you just just be willing to lose because eventually you're going to see it in a positive light where you win. You know, don't give up yourself. Don't give up uh, your hope. You can strategize. You can you can find somebody somewhere that can give you uh, the benefit of their expertise and help, like these people here at Financial Educational Services. So, Nicole, how do you how did you view that post? Because you told me you shared it. What what was your opinion? You know, when you saw it, what what was the first thing that came to your mind? Uh, thanks, Jasmine, and uh, thanks for having me as well. Um, <clears throat> the first thing I saw uh, that came to my mind when I saw it is I am power. Um, and I, instantly I shared it because it is true. 
um, even though you may feel like you've lost, but you have not lost yourself. And simply uh, because you didn't quit and you're not a quitter. And you say, I'm a loser. I've lost, but I'm not a quitter. And that's, that's very relevant to um, what's going on with our society today and our community. Um, we're going to be hit with financial challenges all the time. And um, as long as you have the mindset, which is really where it is, um, that you are not a quitter, um, that's what will keep you going and keep you motivated. Um, and like you mentioned with your repo, um, yeah, you you may lo- stand a chance to lose your vehicle, and you know it'll cause you to probably provide uh, depend on public transportation and all that, you know. Um, but that's not the end of the world, and we have solutions for those those type of things. And something that's, something uh, such as a repo can um, re- reflect your credit in a really bad manner. Um, that will, um, if your credit is not already down as low as it can go, it will make it even lower. Um, and that's where we at Financial Education Services come in at. Uh, we empower. We uplift. We repair your credit. We bring you out of that rut. We get that repo removed from your credit. Um, our team of attorney, attorneys uh, diligently and methodically um attack the credit bureau to get something as such as a repossession off your credit. Um, and and there is hope at the end of the tunnel of those your credit restoration process. So we encourage you not to give up. Um, yeah, you may have lost something, but you'll gain a lot more because you're not a quitter. And that spoke in volume with me when I read the post. I just said, there she goes again, right on the money. And instantly I shared it. So, um it's very, very relevant, and um, you are not a quitter. We are not a quitter, uh, quitter. So we know how to, um, with the resources that we have at hand, we know there again. There's a light at the end of that tunnel. Yeah, yeah. I was speaking to uh, someone else about the opportunity, and you know, with finances being challenged for me the way they are, I, I'm just sharing. It. I'm not in the business, so I don't have any uh, uh, real gain. I'm, you know, I'm just like, you got to hear this. You got to see this. There is hope because I know people are struggling financially. What I love about what what attracts me to the business side and the business opportunity is it fits my personality to empower people, to bring people out from a, a, a dark place a place that is very damaging to their psyche, to their physical well-being, uh, to, to just just to their esteem, and to lift them from that place and show them, okay, not only can this company do this for you and change the direction you're going in, they can help you set up great financial planning for the future, protecting your ID uh, from identity theft, uh, uh, there's a host of other things of code is better at it than I am because I'm still like learning and looking. But what's exciting is that the the education uh, is self empowering more so than oh we just we just clean your credit. You know we do this for you for a couple of hundred dollars and you know we get it off in a year's time you'll be great. No, these people, as I have seen from Nicole, as self evidence from her own what what this is doing. I mean, it's like a month or two times since we've spoken about this and how quickly things are being done. And this is just because the attorneys that are doing it, they have the inside track. We don't even know really what the freaking FICA score is all about, but this score is so prevalent and so important, it stops you if it's bad it stops you from getting a job. It, it can stop you, it, you know, and it could be something like on your, you didn't pay a medical bill. You got sick and, you know, you couldn't afford, you had to go to the hospital, you couldn't, you know. Uh, or you lost a job and you got evicted from your apartment or they had to foreclose your home. Things bad, they say it like this, bad things happening to good people. What the heck is that? You know, but 
we because we don't have finances at our fingertips to go and pay cash money for a vehicle, cash money for a home, we rely on our credit worthiness. However, uh, you know, the lender deems you to be credit worthy by your FICA score, which is a combination of a whole host of things. But my my real point is if you fell for the okie doke like Jasmine did, I'm so grateful for this opportunity to have a chance to, to, to learn, to clear it up, and to learn how to keep it clean and to make a financial plan, not just for myself but for my children. So their children are not in the predicament that I'm in today. I never want anybody to go through what I've experienced, such as, you know, I, like I said, I'm being transparent. Y'all could, anybody could do what they want to do or say what they want to say. I'm, I'm being trans, real transparent here because I believe you'll understand and identify whether you tell the truth about it or don't want people to know. Um, for me, I wouldn't want to get the mail out the mailbox because I'm so far in debt. I know that most of the mail is from bill collectors, debt collectors. It's this is past due. And then I got to figure out, okay, which one am I going to do this month to kind of bring it somewhat current? Uh, also, okay, well, these I really can't do at all, so they're just already on a negative light on my credit report, so I'll figure that out later. You know, maybe I'll get a couple of hundred dollars together and offer them a settlement. I I fell for the okie doke, and it all precipitated with me getting the car. I got the car, and then every time I went in the store, would you like to try? And and me, I was always the person that said, if you can't afford it, don't get it. Don't put anything on credit. I didn't believe in having a credit card. So falling into the credit card trap, once I got the car, it boosted my credit score. Okay. Notes, note was being paid on time. Now I'm getting offers for for credit cards from all the little departments and stores, and I'm getting it. And I'm like, oh, this is great. I, I qualified. I got the card. Oh, I can take this receipt, and I can go shop and get this. So it, it, it became a problem. Again, I'm talking about me. I'm not pointing fingers at other people because I don't know what y'all do in your world and your house. But Jasmine went a little crazy. And I'm like, Okay, now when finances are a little shaky and I still have the credit card, I'm going to buy my groceries. I'm paying the cell phone bill with the credit card. Now, that don't, you know, that that's not good to me. It went against everything that I believe, everything, but I'm, now I'm addicted to it, and now I'm in a problem. And now there's not enough income to take care of it. Now, I don't know if my story sounds like anybody else's story. And, again, I'm being transparent. But when Nicole brought this opportunity to me, I think she just sent me a text. And I probably still have the text on the phone. And I'm like, what? I need to know more about this. And then we got on the phone and we started talking. And I'm, I, I was blown away from the door. Now, Nicole, is, am I a, the typical response that you get, or do you get people to be like, well, you know, I, I don't need that. I don't, you know, I, I could care less. What's oh, no, Jasmine. Like? You are the typical response. We've all been there. Um, and uh, there are plenty of people that are still enduring the exact same um, challenge that you, that you have. Um we get tempted with credit credit cards, and you know we we don't realize when they approve us. You know um, we don't factor in that our income cannot sustain the type of credit that we will um, produce, or the type of bills we'll produce with the credit cards that we just been approved of. A lot of times when we do get a credit card, we don't factor in. We don't even care how much the interest rate is. I was speaking mm. to someone the other day, and I said, um, you have a credit card? Yeah, what's your interest rate? I don't know. You know, mm. we don't care. We just know we have free money 
on this card. We could go swipe it and get what we need. Um, Mm -hmm. And and in turn, you end up in more debt than you started with because we don't factor in how we're going to pay this credit card at the end of the month. Um, And and we don't factor in, you know, of course, we all know the majority of us are suffering from, of course, uh, too much month at the end of our money. So when we get to, when that bill comes in the mail, like you say, you check your mail, you know, you know bills are there. You know debt collectors are on you. We don't factor in later that we're going to have to pay off this, this credit card. If you didn't have the money in your pocket at the time to get what you needed, um, more than likely you may not have that money to pay that card off or pay that bill when it's time to be paid. And like you said, then you get yourself in more trouble. I've been there many times, and I know a lot of people have as well. Um, but with um, the good thing about it is that with financial education services, we coach you on how to manage your credit cards. Not only do we repair your credit and get your FICO up to where you can get a credit card that's affordable that you with a, an interest rate that you don't have to worry about paying three, four times as much for the product that you um, that someone with a good credit score would pay for just for what the product is. With a bad credit score, you get a credit card, your interest rate, you're going to pay at least three times as much for that product or whatever it is that you wanted to have that card. So we make sure we get your credit score to a certain height, um, your credit rate at a desired rate that you would like for it to be. And then we coach you on how to manage your credit card. Um, one of the key components are um, a lot of people don't know that they should not exceed over 30% of your your credit amount that's given on that card. If you stay under 30%, you will stay in the green with your credit card and mm-hmm. the company. Then they Mm -hmm. will increase your credit limit over time, and you'll start getting more credit cards from different credit card companies with a lower interest rate, which is what we want. Um, They don't want to see that, like you said, great example that you're going to the grocery store and you're living off your credit card. They'll detect Mm -hmm. that right off the bat, and Mm -hmm. that right there will send red flags that they will cap off your credit limit, um, won't send you any other card. Of course, other companies are going to send you cards because you purchased your vehicle and it boosted up your FICO score, and those credit cards are going to come. And the best way to manage them is keep your credit card limit up, maybe put, fill your tank up, um, and then pay that off. You know, they yeah. want to see that you are able to be responsible with your credit card um, yeah. versus which we are struggling. And sometimes these are setups. And I'm just going to keep it real. <clears throat> They're setups from the credit company. They already know you can't afford that credit card. They know they're going to make more money off of you with that credit card than not giving you the credit card. And we all typically do the exact same thing that you just mentioned that you that you do. And that's more money for them. But we here at Financial Education Services, we're here to empower and educate. And education is key. And when you yeah. get those credit cards in your wallet and you know how to manage them correctly, that's our aim. Win, win. So, yeah. no, you're not alone. You are the tip of – your response is the typical response um, with our communities. Um, and and you, you are a few steps above because some of them can't even get those credit cards. Um, so for um, – give me just a moment here. Um, yes, yeah, so what you want to do is uh, with our company, like I said, we want to educate you and we want you to rise and we want you to be able to live and get yourself out of financial struggles um, and we'll coach you all the way. So, yes, and, 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 and with the company, we have so many different things. We even also have a financial literacy challenge that we, we offer to um, our prospects. And it's just 13 questions that we ask. Do you currently, uh, do you know your current credit score? Uh, if your credit score is 750 above, um, you know, so that you can save the most money and have the most control of your financial uh, position, do you know that? Um, do you currently utilize credit-related tools that enable you to monitor your credit reports? Do you have the following um, um, in place, like a living w- a, a will, a living trust, health care, financial power of attorney? We, we ask 
questions like this, 13 of these questions. And if you are answering no, um, are you aware that every 30 seconds someone identity theft is stolen? Do you have someone type, do you have some type of identity theft protection system currently in place? Do you feel like you're on track to be debt free at this point in your life? Do you currently have a budgeting or debt payoff tool or system in place? Uh, do you have a hundred, do you have a, a life insurance policy of more than a hundred thousand um, dollars? These questions are some of the questions that we want to ask you. And if most of those answers are no, we can help. We have a we have a program that we can offer at eighty seven dollars a month to secure you and get those no's turned into a, a yes. Um, here with Financial Education Services, and we're here to walk you along the way. So that is something that um, is very relevant in our community. We're here to change lives and get our community out of the financial challenges that we're struggling with. Yeah, listen, we're going to take a quick break, I want to give you some little tips from what I'm researching about credit. Uh, And it's not just credit cards, but stay tuned, and we'll be right back after this brief commercial. I know I didn't say that right. Commercial, but, you know, uh, (laughs) Ebonics. Commercial. Commercial. We'll be right back. Six common causes of credit card debt. Charging purchases on a credit card has steadily been the most preferred payment method of consumers lately. About 1.5 billion credit cards in the country are helping fuel this way of life. According to StatisticBrain.com, there are about 176.8 million consumers who have a credit card in their wallet, where the average card ownership per person is 3.5. This goes to show the dependency of the U.S. market in credit card purchases. The expense item is still in the top four debt item in the country. It is in the league of mortgage loans, student loans, and auto loans. In a consumer-driven economy, credit cards play a vital role not only in the private lives of their users, but the whole economy as well. It increases the purchasing power of the consumer and extends credit for those otherwise impossible purchases. But there are a few people that despise credit cards because of all the financial trouble they are in at the moment. Some of them were not aware of the impact of credit cards in their credit score, how late charges worked, and other details that dragged them down in debt and interest payments. Though there are those that are able to live off a credit card but still manage to maintain their finances in check. Common Credit Card Problems It is important to note that any unfavorable details in your credit score might take approximately seven years to repair. This is in stark contrast with how a consumer can do damage on the credit score in a matter of days or weeks. What is easily put on the report will be a very hard and long battle to recover from. In most cases, the problem lies with the user and not the card. The consumer gets in all sorts of predicament because the usage of the card was not properly observed. Here are some of the top reasons why a person could walk right into a debt trap using a credit card. Credit card ready. Most consumers are not ready. This is one basic flaw in the system where as young as 18-year-old high school students get access to a credit card. When they get to college, they see credit cards as an endless source of cash. Then they come home to mom and dad pleading poverty with a tidy amount of credit card bill. It is not only students because there are also professionals who are not ready for the added financial responsibility but still get their hands on a shiny new plastic. One basic requirement of owning a credit card is a steady income to pay off the purchases. It is impossible to pay for the charged items without a good and steady source of funds. It could be coming from an allowance, salary from employment, or even returns from investment ventures. You would need to understand budgeting as well for this. More than you can handle. Most of the consumers started with one credit card, but not all of them stop at just one. A lot of people are taking in a lot more and sometimes go way in over their head. Assigning a specific function to each credit card is a great idea, but only if you can be financially mature enough to handle multiple cards. If not, it is better to stick to one card. Some consumers assign a specific card for groceries, gas, and other items. This is a budgeting tool that allows them to see how much each cost item is being used through the credit card bill. This is useful but requires a lot of restraint and discipline. Restrain from using the credit card just because you feel like it and discipline in using the card for specific purposes only. Debt overcomes income. 
As you make a purchase using a credit card, you do not see actual money exchange hands. This could be one of the reasons why overspending with the card is a common occurrence. Plus, the fact that the money being used to pay for the purchase is borrowed and not actual money of the holder makes it all too easy to spend. Consumers need to take tabs on their expenses to know if their salary or any other sources of income is enough to meet the payments once the bill arrives. For some, it is the longest few weeks of their lives, from the time the purchase was made up to the time the statement arrives. It is important to know how much you can spend in your credit card and keep a close eye on your credit limit as well. Payment dispute. A late payment and non-payment are reported to the credit bureaus by the lender. But if there is any dispute on purchases on the card, it is best to talk to your lender at the soonest possible time. This is to get to the bottom of the issue and will be able to investigate the incident. At this point, it is best to keep an open line of communication with your creditor and not to hold any payments due as a sign of retaliation for the error. Major life change. Credit.com points out that major life changes affects the finances as well. Getting married, expecting a baby, moving houses, and other big-ticket expense purchases can have an effect on the personal finance of the consumer, even up to their credit cards. It is best to be able to anticipate and plan your budget around the new chapter in your life and use the credit card to your advantage rather than a liability. Understanding the fine print. It is ideal that a consumer knows the basic details of his or her credit card. The credit limit, payment due date, and interest rate are just some of the items that is needed to be remembered by the person. But there are more details about the credit card that a consumer must understand in order to enjoy the benefits to the fullest. With a card, it is best to understand how the late fees and other finance charges work on your loan. Knowing this can alert you even before buying an off-budget item. It is a great idea to understand how the point system works if there are any fees related to transfers of balances into or out of the current one. Credit card use. Consumers are not asked to splurge on clothes shopping every day or to totally stop purchases with a credit card. There should be a fine line between the two, and the consumer must be able to strike the balance between too much and too little. Though there are fast credit score fixes, a consumer must not rely on this possibility to lose track of credit card spending. Proper money management, keeping a steady income source, and managing credit card expenses are some of the prerequisites for properly handling the plastic. It is a tough job, but the rewards are great. Staying away from debt is one of the top reasons why people are trying to be more aware of credit card usage. Debt is already an all too common circumstance for most people, but the better handling of various credit tools such as a credit card, then debt will be kept at bay. Okay, so Nicole, I'm going to switch the gears up for a little bit and talk about, because you know, use my coach and my mentor for these things like this. So I'm, I'm following my coach. She'd be giving me good tips and strategy and you know like I said for me I, I'm just being me and I'm always being me so you know either you like me or you don't it doesn't I, I'm so over it too it doesn't matter but for those of you who get it and understand where I'm coming from always shooting straight from the hip um, my finances won't allow me at the moment to come into the business venture but that ain't stopping me I, I'm, I'm a very creative being so I have decided to pre-sell, <laughs> pre-sell and get as many people as I possibly can on the bandwagon and do some things very creatively to actually take advantage of the business opportunity along with getting my, my uh, credit repair. So, you know, I just basically because this is such a no-brainer, it's not work, and I'm just telling people, and they're like, well, blah, 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 blah. so I was like, okay, um, I'm going to give Nicole your number. <laughs> Nicole, Nicole. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm like, I, I'm not even coherent with it. <laughs> this is just the responses because while they won't maybe share with me, my credit is jacked up. Like, I will share with them. I, I am messed up, toe up from the floor. Up. I share it. Because I want people to understand when I come up, I was there. I, I was I was that person with the rags in the bag, uh, homeless. I have a roof over my head, but it's not mine. You know, I have a car that I really don't own. I am 
I'm displaced, I'm divorced, I am, I'm on the comeback. And starting all over again, what I'm finding for myself is, first of all, I am, that's why this show is called I Am Power, because everything that the enemy tried to tear me down in, he did, he hasn't succeeded. Uh, I got bumped, bruised, I got the scars, I got the tears, but rising up from a position with power, because I'm, like we said earlier, I'm not a quitter. You know, yes, I get down, I get out, but the bottom line is, wherever you are in the scheme of things, you got to be, first of all, real with yourself. So when this opportunity comes to you where you might not want to be as blatantly transparent, you know what your situations are, or you know somebody or a bunch of people. So from the business aspect, this is a no-brainer because even if my even if I had the perfect credit score and everything was on point and I wasn't delinquent, I wasn't this or that, this would still be a great business opportunity because I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a businesswoman. I want to see other people succeed, and this is an this is what I call creating opportunities for others, creating opportunities that satisfy others. So. It is definitely like a no-brainer because if it's not you, I bet you know 10 people who it is. And then how how does that feel? How would that feel if you could get them out of the situation, especially if you care for them? Get them out of that situation. Get them um, financially educated and financially secure with, you know, identity theft protection. I, I heard something about insurance, life insurance. Get them a plan. And get them, you know, debt free or on the way to debt freedom. Um, so I just talk to people very simply, and like I said, I'm not real articulate with it. But I, I put my coach on because that's that's what she do. She's articulate with it. You hear her talking, and she's articulate. And, you know, she she takes it from there. And I have yet to have anybody not. Be interested. Correct, Nicole? Absolutely correct. Everyone, <clears throat> excuse me, everyone that I speak with are overly interested. The first okay. thing they say is, how do I sign up? What, how do I get started? Um, and then they'll especially ask questions. Especially when so they're here at 87. Especially when they're here at $87 yes. a month. <laughs> yes. And that is something that I find um uh, I find myself repeating constantly because they can't believe it, and, this, and there are no hidden fees. So you're telling me um, I can get my credit repair for $87 a month. Yes. And how much do I need to put down? Only $87? Only $87. So no $400, $500 up front. No. And you'll be engaged the entire time. Um, this is a business opportunity as well. We want to change lives by um, increasing their credit scores. We want to educate them on their finance, finances. Um, this is huge for everyone that is struggling with their credit. Um, I don't know anyone that just say, oh, I don't care about my credit. I know it's jacked up. I don't care. You know what? Leave me alone. I don't want. No. People are starting to wake up. Their eyes are starting to open. They realize how hard it is to live with jacked up credit. They realize that. They know how costly it is. You know, I just was telling on the phone, you know, I know you would love to walk in there and get that iPhone 7 just by signing your name on the dotted line. But more people, everybody that wants that phone, for the most part, they can't afford it. Or they have to come up with that. They can't afford it credit. Well, they can afford it because they're going to come out of their pockets for $500 down or $350 down just to walk out of that store with that iPhone 7. Well, if you are that serious about a phone, I pray that you're that serious about your credit. Uh, Eighty-seven dollars a month to get uh, eighty-seven dollars to get started. Eighty-seven dollars a month is worth your credit to be restored. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, but and the business, the business opportunity, the absolutely. business opportunity, because not only are you helping people, now you're making money while you're helping the people. And, 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 and building building the team. Can, would it be okay if I share with them, Nicole, a, a creative strategy that I came up with to get myself into the business? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I had, you know, I don't know if you guys ever heard of rent parties. 
Um, but I had this idea, and, and anybody else who wants to be in the business opportunity, you know, we're going to be doing a teleconference call. Um, some people will get an invite from me or an invite from Nicole. If you're listening to this recording um, and you want to get the information, just inbox me on Facebook, or if you have my phone number, give me a call, or send me an email if you have that, uh, or like my Facebook page, Jasmine Farnham, which is public figure page, you know, you can do that as well, and I'll give you the uh, teleconference uh, information so you can dial in next Thursday at about 7 o'clock, and, you know, we'll be discussing more about the business opportunity. Uh, but for me, I, I came up with an idea, kind of like a rent party. Uh, I call it a munch and learn or a lunch and learn. Now, the munch and learn might be for breakfast. And I'll get the bagels from the, you know, hotel bagel place with clean locks and get some Dunkin' Donuts coffee. And for 2 or $3, I'm going to a daycare. I'm going to a, you know, and they're invited to come and partake, but they're going to get, they're going to, get to see the video. They're going to get to see some information about. And I'm just signing people up once I've accumulated the fee that it will cost me to enter as an agent. Now I have a ready pool of people who either want the service because they're going to be a customer or they want the business opportunity. So, you know, by the by the beginning of next month, I should have it together, but it's going to be fun for me to get out and introduce it to the community. I can even take it, you can take it to, to your church. You don't have the, you don't have the funds. You don't have the 200 and whatever dollars it is to come in as an agent. And Nicole can explain better how you get your, uh, services way because now you're coming in as an agent. Um, but don't let not having the money stop you. If you got to go get cans and bottles, do this because I forget the number, but it's like, more than 70 some odd percent of Americans are carrying thousands or tens of thousands of dollars in debt. And I talked about that in the previous uh, recording, so just, you know, it's an archive, it's on my page, and Nicole has shared it. Just go listen to that because I shared some stats from the web uh, about consumer debt. And it's, it's ridiculous. And it's not just the, the part about the consumer debt, the, na- the national debt, not just that, you got to look at the fact that the way people are doing business is totally different. You're not going and filling out an application and handing your resume to anybody anymore. Everything is online. And how many people are out there looking for jobs and searching for jobs? And they're not traditional jobs anymore. You know, i I'm not looking anymore for a job. I'm looking for an opportunity. I'm looking for that opportunity that will lead me into leaving a legacy for my generations to come. Um, I can't. I can't. I can't will my job to my kids. Once I'm dead and they 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 use me up and I'm dead, you know, if I had a life insurance on the job, that's one thing the kids could get. But they can't get my salary anymore. But joining an opportunity like this financial educational services, and I also mentioned to you guys, I have a five link uh, representative as well, and that product that I sell is strictly an insurance supplemental plan and one of their high five products. And I'm also going out because I'm about empowering people not only to be wealthy but to be healthy. You don't want to have money and not have your health because as a uh, the gentleman that, that died, Steve Jobs, he had all this money, great, you know, ability to create his wealth, but when he died of colon cancer, he was like, all the money in the world is not going to save my life. I'm dying. So, you know, I, I, I say this in all earnesty to everybody that hears this podcast. Look for opportunities to multiply yourself. Uh, plant the seed that are going to be beneficial, going to reap a harvest. I don't I don't believe in the law of large number. I believe in the law of effectiveness. 
So it could be one person, and that one person can be so effective with what they say, what they do, that they draw the masses. Uh, it could be five people, but you want to make sure that when you're building a team, you do it strategically. You don't want to just be going out there willy-nilly and, 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 and talking to everybody. who Maybe they don't have any interest or they don't care or they don't have any understanding or think they can't do it. You, If you're going to recruit, you want to recruit people who are power hitters. And by power hitters, I mean like when they speak, people are listening. You know, when when when, when they make a recommendation, they got that respect that people are like, what? Yeah. Well, if, if Jasmine said it, I know she's not going to send me no junk or nothing, you know, that would hurt me. They listen. So you want to be strategic when you're building your team. I gave you one tip. Don't let the fact that you don't have the down, the, 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 the entry fee stop you. Find a creative way to get that money. If you have other family members that this can help, get them to sign up. You know, and get them to assist you to become an agent. And then you, when you get into business and you're making money, get them at, in as an agent. You know, and then let, teach people how to build uh, what they call the downline, but I like to call it a team. You know, you don't need 100,000 people underneath you. You need people that are effective. You know, so you might want to consider who would be the most effective people. You know, for me, uh, with the with the healthcare product that I'm doing for five links, I want to talk to alternative practitioners who could benefit from the supplemental plan because the supplemental plan allows them to to uh, treat and for their their copayment to be acknowledged by this supplemental plan. So you know you want to be effective. You want to find your niche. Another set of people that I think the supplemental plan would be very effective for, especially for the pharmaceuticals, are people who are 55 and above and are on chronic medication all the time. Those meds can wind up costing you hundreds of, hundreds of dollars a month, especially if you're taking multiple meds. So I, I, I'm, I'm targeting people for a specific purpose where it will be effective. How will it be effective? Think about that as you are uh, uh, looking at this as a business opportunity and be strategic. Be strategic in your planning of how you want to do it um, as well as the benefit of paying paying down your debt and getting things discharged. Nicole? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And I'm right there with you, um, and that's exactly what it's about, um, the supplemental plan. And um this business is not for everyone um, at, from the business opportunity perspective, but it is for everyone who is struggling with their credit that wants to come in as either uh, would just want to come in as a customer and get their credit repaired. It's for everyone that's struggling. But, again, we are looking for, like you said, heavy hitter, top producers um, that have the mindset that want to grow um, with the business and earn great revenue in the process of restoring their credit simply for 286 um, mm-hmm. and have the ability to have their um, $87 a month waived just by simply bringing in five people um, on the team, whether they're agents or customers, five people or more, five people will automatically have your $87 a month waived. Um, okay. And typically, it, it, in, in essence, it comes out cheaper just coming in as um, a, an agent uh, to pay 286 with your five people versus, I mean, yeah, we have some people that simply just want to get their credit re- re- restored um, $87 a month, and we're looking at um, approximately six months um, depending on the extent of your credit. Um, right. And then when you, you kind of do the, do the math, um, 87 times six, that's $522. Um, Hello. So why not come in as an agent and earn revenue in the process? If you are struggling financially, this opportunity is for you if you feel you have the mindset because that is exactly ultimately where it starts is the mindset um, the to mindset. produce, to um, multiply, like you say, multiply yourself. Um, you get build yourself a team and earn revenue. Residual income is exactly residual. where it's at. 
Mm-hmm. You know, residual is that, key. That's a key word, and you know what? We'll be back next week to talk to you about earning money residually, residual income. Listen, Nicole, I want to thank you so much for being my co-host on I Am Power Radio. Remember, folks, you also have the power because God has given us all the power, not just the power to get wealth, but the power to be well while we're getting well. Join us again on our next podcast. See you next week. You're listening to DP 818 Power Radio Network, where we keep you locked to the power.